five, four, three. That's where my and good morning, and here we are once again at the very lovely corner of Glenwood and Lunt. We're in the heart of Rogers Park. We're up here on the stage at the Heartland Cafe. I am Michael James. It is the 17th of January in the year 2009, and you are listening to another edition of Live from the Heartland Radio. It's a big weekend. People are traveling across country. They're heading to Washington, D.C. They're getting ready to celebrate. It's going to be a new, a new day, a new era in America. We have a lot of work to do, and we're going to talk about some of the things going on in our neighborhood and beyond. Our guests today will include Dave Lipman, uh, who has performed for many years as Shrub, and he will be performing tonight at the No Exit Cafe. He's in town for Camp Hope, and he will come up a little bit later. I think we're going to get Tracy Siska coming up to talk about the Justice Project. And we're going to start off with our friend Liz Vettel, who is the executive director of the Rogers Park Community Council. Good morning to you, Elizabeth. Good morning, Michael. How are you? I'm good, and it's glad to I'm glad to have you here. I'm happy to be here on, on a this beautiful, snowy, snowy day. day. <laughs> <laughs> it's warming up, though. It's been warming up since about six or seven yesterday, and um, it's actually pretty toasty in here. A lot of coffee, a lot of uh, tea, a lot of uh, pancakes going on. Uh, Let's start off by uh, you sharing with our listeners what the Rogers Park Community Council is. Well, the Rogers Park Community Council is a neighborhood-based organization, a not-for-profit 501c3, that began back in 1952 as an advocacy group in favor of saving the street and beaches from development such as what went on downtown, which we all know what went on downtown. There are no street and beaches. <laughs> and uh, it was very successful. A group of people banded together, uh, among other things, sent actual sandbags to the city council. And as a result, the lakefront protection ordinance was passed that is still in place today that regulates development, uh, any kind of development that affects the lakefront. So that was actually the first act of the co community council and brought and it together? And its sole purpose, actually, at that time. You know, it's, it's wonderful to f have you fill that in for me. I know I've been telling the story for years that there was a woman named Toby Prince who was a, a progressive labor activist uh, who lived in our community until she passed away a few years back. And I'd always heard that she was the person, along with others, I think Bert Reef and uh, apparently a, a number of other people uh, who stopped the development process of the high-rises going up along Sheridan. And they, you know, as people know that those buildings, they're high-rises all the way up to Mundelein, now Loyola. Well, that's a great way to start an organization. It is a great way to start. And then from there, we've evolved based really on, on the feedback from the community and the type of needs that have manifested themselves since then into primarily a social service delivery organization. What does that mean, a social service delivery organization? Well, it means that we have several different programs that meet the needs of different constituencies in the neighborhood. So we have a senior program, which serves people over 65 in our neighborhood, kind of interviewing them, doing an assessment of their needs, and hooking them up with different services, state programs, local programs that can help their lives um, just be a little easier and more efficient. And that can be anything from finding subsidized housing to, to applying for food stamps and social security and things like that. I saw that, uh, just speaking of seniors, I saw that in your paper, the Rogers Park 2000, uh, which comes out quarterly, quarterly uh, there was an appeal for uh, used cell phones. Uh, and apparently that was so that seniors could get these used cell phones refurbished and they would be uh, useful for 911 calls. Yes, that's a program that actually started uh, for domestic violence victims, but it's been expanded to anyone really who just needs to call 911. So, um, yes, we're doing that. And, and interestingly, a lot of seniors have been the ones donating the phones. Because they're getting new iPhones. I guess so. so. <laughs> With picture-taking abilities, et cetera, et cetera. And texting. Don't forget that. <laughs> uh, I'm getting good at that, actually. My little fingers are moving quicker and quicker, more quickly. All right, so one of the uh, uh, social service-oriented things you do is to work with seniors. What else does the community we, council do? We also have a youth program. We've actually just begun a new program at Armstrong School in the neighborhood which is after school tutoring. It's through the city's out-of-time school programs. 
And for that, we utilize a lot of volunteers, some Northwestern students, some Loyola students, and uh, we're just getting started with that age group, uh, trying to promote staying in school, reducing dropout rates, and just developing better study habits. So we're working on that. We have a unique domestic violence program that works in collaboration with the 24th and 20th police districts where referrals are generated directly to us from domestic violence police report encounters. And then we provide court advocacy, helping the victims to acquire orders of protection and also referring them to counseling agencies, which we do not do. We're not a counseling agency, just a court advocacy program. And we also have a housing program. It's called the Housing Resource Center. RBCC doesn't have any actual housing stock, but what we try to do is identify problem buildings, talk to tenants about issues they're having with their landlords, and sort of mediate landlord-tenant disputes from, from both sides. There used to be a Rogers Park Tenants Organization. I don't, know, I don't think that exists anymore. There used to be a Section 8 Tenants Organization that's morphed into something else. And, yeah. and I think there was at one time a, a, an overall tenant organization, yeah. but right now, um, that type of thing we also refer to, where there's a need for actual organizing, we refer to MTO, the Metropolitan Tenants Organization in Uptown. Uh, so we're talking housing, seniors, youth, and domestic violence. And one more. Okay. Which is um, the program that your own Katie used to do that for us. That would be the co-host Katie Hogan. And, uh, my business partner. There you go. That's <laughs> technically, technically called the Community Awareness and Pride Program, but we have actually changed the name. We now call it the Immigrant Resource Center because we have a grant that comes from the Illinois Department of Human Services that covers services to immigrants. So we help people with their documentation. We help just basically identifying programs that are available despite documentation or if it's possible to acquire documentation. And one of those things that's really important is the All Kids program, which is an insurance program started by uh, our beleaguered governor that is still a good program <laughs> and uh, allows people regardless of their legal status in the U.S. to get insurance for their children. So it's really important. And that's called All important. Kids. Uh, well, there's a lot of stuff on your plate. We have a lot of stuff. Housing resources, seniors, youth, domestic violence, all kids.